a strong European tradition dating back to the Middle Ages maintained that the Jews were black. The notion of the blackness of the Jews or Jewishness blackness has become commonplace in scholarly discourse. Going back to the path-breaking work of Sander L. Gilman in the late 1980s, scholars often assert that a strong European tradition dating back to the Middle Ages maintained that the Jews were black or at least swarthy and finds sharp expression in modern anti-Semitic literature. Mellon, 2003, page 31. Mellon, Mellon Abraham, 2003, The Image of the Black in Jewish Culture, A History of the Other. London and New York. Rutledge Curzon is found in that book on page 31. That in medieval literature a theory prevailed in which the Jews were part of the black race or were at least dark skinned. Shabbat, 2001, page 182, and that's History in Black African Americans in Search of an Ancient Path, or that the general look of the Jew was considered to be like that of the black. Prophet 2013, in Black Jews in Africa and the Americas. The article is meant as a caveat or a question mark on the prevailing notion. One issue with the notion is ambiguity. Jewish blackness sometimes means that the Jew was, Jews were quite literally seen as black. Gilman, 1994, page 372, The Jewish Nose. Are Jews white or the history of the nose job? In the other, in Jewish thought and history, constructions of Jewish culture and identity, which is a matter of color but often a more provocative sense is implied. Namely that in the eyes of the non-Jew who defined him in Western society, the Jews became the blacks. Gilman, page 19, uh, 1986, page 8. And that's from Jewish self-hearted anti-Semitism and the hidden language of the Jews, which refers to the race, however, Proving each of these two issues of blackness, color, or race requires a different kind of evidence. An evidence that supports one sense might determine the other. For example, calling a Jew white Negro, Gilman, page 19, no, I'm not page, year 1986, page 7, and 2007 corroborates the racial sense of the Jewish blackness, but undermines the color sense referring to the Jew as white. Black then can refer to several things. It can be a, a race, it can be color, and it can be a mere metaphor. Even though in our sources these senses are not always easy to distinguish, they must be sorted out at least theoretically, merging at these senses together and providing evidence that supports any of them, even when it contradicts others may end up in cherry-picking. What are the implications of Jewish blackness in the racial sense? First, one should be alert to anachronism. The concept of race is a modern construct that emerged just a couple of centuries ago. Talking of Jews as blacks cannot predate the concept of a black race. Second, if Jews are considered one race, a black race, this should be true for virtually all Jews, not just for a specific community. Since the traits of a race are supposed to be shared, at least to some extent, by all its members. Furthermore, since some versions of racism go as far as to divorce racial, classification of actual physical characteristics and specifically from skin color. Jews, at least hypothetically, can be blacks even without being black. 
Jewish blackness qua color has its own issues. Again, in order to justify the notion that color must characterize most of the Jews, not just a specific Jewish group. If, for example, the Jews of Ethiopia are considered black, it has little to do with Jewish blackness. Moreover, black as color has many senses. It can mean dark skin color, whereby dark is always a relative observation. But black can also be the color of dirt, of illness, even of tan, and as in Song of Solomon 1, verse 5 through 6, meanings that do not fall neatly under Jewish blackness. Black can also be used metaphorically, politically incorrect as it may sound. This color has always suffered from bad reputation. Humans are diurnal animals that depend predominantly on their sense of sight in order to survive and thrive. Therefore, the symbolism that assigns positive values to white color and light and negative ones to black color and darkness is not a racist Western bias, but universal. Even in the lower Congo, white signifies right, good, order, reason, truth, health, generosity, good luck. Whereas black signifies wrong, guilt, envy, intention to kill, grief, and so on. Needham, 1979, page 262, Color Symbolism in the Lower Congo. The fact that white garments or skin turn dark with dirt while the opposite is not true has also contributed to blacks' bad image. Racism has viciously strained this color symbolism in order to impose a hierarchy on humans by means of their skin color. Scholars, however, should be careful not to read actual skin color into their sources when mere color symbolism is meant. For example, when Jerome 347, 420 centuries before the transatlantic or even the Arab slave trade writes, since we were black because of our skins and passions, we have taken the lead over the people of Israel and we be leaving the Savior. Even thus, we Ethiopians, that we were transformed ourselves and became white, quoted in Cordes 1979, page 27. The theme of Ethiopian Ethiopians in patristic literature in the image of the black Western art. He does not mean the Gentiles actually had black skin before converting to Christianity. Black can be used metaphorically for sin, evil, etc. And even black Ethiopian can be used allegorically for sinners without implying an actual skin color. Christians associated all infidels with sin and evil, especially Jews. Therefore, assertions such as the association of the Jews with blackness is as old as Christian tradition or medieval or carnography. Always just propose the black image of the synagogue, of the old law, with the white of the church. Gilman, 1986, page 7 are true as long as black is taken metaphorically but cannot be used as evidence for the actual perceived skin color of the Jews, let alone their racial categorization.